Our Father, we thank you for the reports we're hearing of men and women that have trusted you in their own time. This is our time. And I pray, O oh Lord, that same faith in the Lord that will never fail. You implant it in every heart tonight in Jesus' name. And what we have read about in Bible days, Lord, we pray the same thing will be revealed and reproduced in every one of our lives and ministries in Jesus' name. We pray that Christ's power will be manifested in every life, through every life, for the benefit of your church and for the salvation of people around us in Jesus' name. Open our eyes to behold your power and your glory tonight. Touch everyone in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. We're looking at the word of the Lord tonight. And we are considering Christ's power over natural and supernatural forces. I need to make you understand that Christ manifested a balanced ministry, a full ministry. And it's calling upon us to follow him. That we too will manifest such balanced, full ministry. In Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee. Number one, teaching in their synagogues. And number two, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And number three, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. It's very, very easy to become one-sided. It's very easy, for example, to concentrate only on healing. It's also very easy to relegate healing, deliverance, miracles to the background and say, that's not important. But you understand that Jesus never did anything redundant. And we have the three-part ministry, the three-fold ministry. He taught, he preached, he healed. That's the reason why, as a balanced believer and balanced minister of the gospel, you want to teach the word of God. You want to preach the gospel. You want to heal as well. That's why in the evenings we are considering the power of Christ that remains the same. Tonight we are looking at chapter 8 of Matthew. And we are looking at verses 23 to 34. We have divided the message into three parts. Number one, dominion over tempest and disasters. Dominion over tempest and disasters. Number two, deliverance from torments of demons deliverance from torments of demons number three our defense and triumph over the devil you have the victory i said you have the victory over the devil we go to point number one in matthew chapter 8 reading from verse 23 and when he was entered into a ship his disciples followed him and behold there arose a great tempest in the sea in so much that the ship was covered with waves but he was asleep and his disciples came to him and awoke him saying lord save us we perish and he says unto them why are ye so fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, and he rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was, what? Tell me out loud. And there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this? that even the winds and the sea obey him. That's the Christ we serve. And the Bible tells us 
that Jesus came so that he will manifest his power over everything, anything that the devil can do. In fact, the Bible says, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now we just see the storm here. We're not told the source, the origin, the cause. But we know there are times when storms, tempests, and problems and troubles like that are caused by the devil. No time to read, but you can find out by yourself in Job chapter 1. It is storm that came, the fire that came, the wind that blew, and the house that collapsed, and the children that died, and the fire that burnt, everything that he had, it was the work of the devil. And the devil is still doing that. He comes to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. And here is the prince, here is the king, here is the lord in the sheep. And then you find his disciples with him. Think about it for a moment. The salvation of the world rests on him. Think about it for a moment. The evangelization of Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth rested on these disciples with him. And if the devil could bring up any storm and drown that sheep that boat right there and made every one of them to be forgotten without jesus christ going to the cross and finishing his ministry then the devil would have succeeded in making the damnation judgment wrath of the whole world possible that entails you behind the curtain isn't it possible that satan was behind causing this storm but then there's something here that jesus christ just slept you wonder why wonderful you know if jesus christ slept and yet there was a storm he must have known something because knowledge is power and the knowledge he had was the word of the lord and that word brought faith in him as you think about it why was he so calm why was he so peaceful number one he knew that the father sent him and he knew that as the father sent him the father was with him therefore any storm any problem did not matter at all when you realize that the lord has sent you in that community where you are and that the lord will never leave you alone i am with you till the end of the world the wind may blow the flood may come the storm may be there you'll be resting in the bosom of the lord nothing will make you afraid number two jesus christ knew that he had been sent to do something and he always said my time is not yet my time is not yet he knew that his time was not yet come to die and therefore he knew that nothing could happen the devil may rage and the problems may come because he knew the time was still in the future when he will go that's why he was peaceful and he was calm number three all the old testament is full of prophecy and the prophecy concerning jesus christ actually talks a lot about a lot of things but there's one thing in psalm 22 they pierced my hands and they pierced my feet he knew that the way to die for him will be the death of the cross and he knew that scripture cannot be broken he knew there was no way he could die by drowning therefore when the storm was there he slept if you will know the thing written concerning you if you will know the word of god that the lord has given to you and then you say to yourself a lot of times you know the promises of god you know they are yours you know it is prophecy and you know the word cannot be broken you'll be resting even while the storm is there and then he knew that there is one word that he will still have to use and that is the word finished it is finished and he knew that 
the assignment had not been finished yet we are just in matthew chapter 8 matthew chapters 1 to 7 and then now in matthew chapter 8 he knew that he had not finished yet he knew that the time will come when he will say father glorify thy son because i've glorified you on the earth i have finished the work that you have given me to do and he knew the work was still there he had not finished and there is nothing that can stop that job that's why he was resting peacefully and calmly in that boat when you know that god has an appointment for you an assignment for you something that he wants you to do and you are just barely starting and you have not finished yet when there is any storm you rest your mind you say well it will come to an end it reminds me of what i heard of a, a semi-illiterate and uh, he rose up they, they, they are telling people to share something and they say rise up and share something that you gain in your reading of the scripture and this fellow rose up and got into some deep deep things and the other fellow rose up and went into some deep deep things and the other fellow came up and went into alliterations uh, uh, you know what i told you yesterday uh, the action the attention the attestation and everything and this i mean literally didn't know that when it came to his turn then he rose up he said you know what i discovered I discover when I read my Bible and I don't come after too many pages before I come across it came to pass it came to pass it came to pass and remember this semi literate we're not dealing with greek now we're not dealing with real interpretation now we're dealing with practical understanding on how to overcome your problem and they were waiting for him to say some deep deep things then he said i know any storm that comes to my life any problem that comes to my life i read it every day when i read they say it came to pass and i know it is coming to pass i said it is coming to pass the problem in your life it came to pass the agony in your life it came to pass it came so that it can pass away it will not stay i said it will not stay all those problems you see all those egyptians you see tonight they came to to pass on they will not stay in jesus name that's what jesus knew he knew that that thing cannot stay and he knew that he could not that not only that he knew that is a master the master of the storm master the tempest is raging the billows are tossing high the, it says the sky is overshadowed with blackness no shelter or help is near carest thou not that we perish how canst thou lie asleep while the while uh, while how canst thou lie asleep when the when each moment so madly is threatening a grave in the angry deep master with anguish of spirit i bow in my grief today the depths of my sad heart are troubled and then it says so waking and save i pray torments of sin and of anguish sweep over my sinking soul i perish i perish dear master oh hasten and take control then we hear the answer from the lord he says the winds and the waves shall obey my will peace be still whether the roars of the storm to sea or the demons or men or whatever it be no water can swallow the sheep where lies the master of ocean and earth and sky they all shall sweetly obey his will peace be still peace be still they all shall sweetly obey his will peace peace be still now it's calm master the terror is over the element sweetly rest our son in the calm lake is mirrored and heavens within my breast linger O blessed redeemer leave me alone no more and with joy i will make the blessed abode and rest on the blissful shore it will be so yeah. your storm will be over yeah. 
that sin that is terrifying you now and you think it will never be over it will be over in fact this very minute it is coming to pass in jesus name that's what jesus did jesus had told the disciples in the account of mark let's pass on to the other side don't you know you are going to the other side from failure to success from defeat unto victory from downfall you are more than a conqueror you are getting to the other side maybe satan does not like that maybe the demons do not like that maybe the enemies of progress do not like that but whether they like it or not you are coming to the other side in jesus name i go to point number two deliverance from the torments of demons we now come across another manifestation of the power of christ and what do we see here from matthew chapter 8 matthew chapter 8 reading from verse 28 and when he was come to the other side in the country of the gagasins there met him two possessed with devils and they coming out of the tombs exceeding fears so that no man might pass by that way and behold they are cried out saying they cried out saying what have we to do with thee jesus thou son of god art thou come thither to torment us before the time and there was a good way off from them and heard of many swine feeding so the devils besought him saying if thou cast us out suffer us permit us allow us to go away into the herd of swine and he said unto them one word was the word go and when they came out they were come out they went into the herd of swine and behold the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters and they that kept them fled and went their way into the city and told everything what was befalling to the possessed of the devils and behold the whole city came out to meet jesus and when they saw him they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts in your free time you can read mark chapter 5 verse 1 to verse 15 you will see a more detailed account there here we find a demon possessed individual demonization has been defined as a condition in which one or more demons evil spirit inhabit and gain control over a human being demonization has been defined as a condition in which one or more demons inhabit and gain control over a human being but you understand that when they saw jesus they trembled and they said have you come to torment us before the time jesus had power over demons and he still has power today as you look at both accounts together you are preachers yourself and therefore you read both accounts i just point out to you a number of things number one the fierceness of the demonized the fierceness of the demonized you find this man in the account you have read in verse 28 how fierce he was and when you go to mark chapter 5 you find how he was cutting himself with stones when demons inhabit and take control over a man they make that man or that woman or that child more powerful than he was she was ordinarily number one the fierceness of the demonized number two the filthiness of the demonized in fact in the account in mark it says he was having an unclean spirit and there are many people in the world out there that when the demons gain control over them they do things that are unclean they are addicted to those things that are clean they want to be free they cannot be free because of the filthiness of the demonized number three the fear of demons when that man saw the lord jesus christ and he knew that this is the one that had authority and power and that power had been given to him from above 
they feared, they said, have you come to torment us before our time? They knew that this is the judge. And the father has committed all judgment into his son. All they were waiting for is that, but the time has not reached. Have you come now? And then he didn't back in with them. He said, come out. He said, go. And they went. Number four, fortification by demons. You find that in Luke chapter 11, verses 24 to 26. When an evil spirit comes out of a man and then he looks for a hiding place a resting place and he cannot find then he comes back he says i will check up the house where i was before my house and then he comes he finds it empty garnished beautified waiting for occupation but christ is not taking control is not training supreme in that heart he goes and takes seven more spirits more wicked than himself to fortify himself number five the fairest of the deliverer if you are going to be a person that will deliver the people that are oppressed the people that are attacked the people that are uh, kind of uh, afflicted with demons uh, you must not be afraid because here we are now the demons are afraid of christ and christ how many of you have christ inside you i said how many of you have christ inside you and christ is there and christ is living big within you and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world therefore normally when the devil sees you he doesn't see your just your facial appearance he doesn't see just your physical height he sees into the inner man and he knows that christ is there he knows that the holy ghost is there he knows that you're a holy ghost man you're a holy ghost woman and normally ordinarily the demons are afraid of you it is when you now betray yourself and you do not know who you are and you do not know the power in you and you begin to tremble and you begin to ask questions that you know you can ask questions to the point that the people you are asking the question from they say ah i thought this was an intelligent man i thought he was a knowledgeable man from the question he is asking he is ignorant and you sell yourself to the devil and the devil knows that the many questions you are asking shows that you are ignorant and then he begins to say some things he begins to terrify you and then you become afraid and as you become afraid like that then he knows that you do not know the power that you have from tonight you are not afraid anymore i said you are not afraid anymore the face of the deliverer by the grace of god that power is there and that power is there tonight in jesus name i remember uh, some some years ago uh, they had a demon possessed fellow and this demon possessed fellow he had not uh, you know allowed the uh, four brothers his relatives to rest for a number of days and they were all dragging him and they were making a lot of force and then eventually they came to our central church in town and i was about to leave and i was in the vehicle and uh, they were holding him and they dragged him near the vehicle and then they called me they said please we need help and you know they were tired they were ragged they were sweating uh, you know the devil was giving them a tough time he knew that they were ignorant although they had power in them they didn't know how to release that power so i was sitting at the back of the car i rolled down the glass and i said what's the problem they say he said this problem uh, you know this man we need to really deal with the case i said that's all right i said now i uh, hold him i said in the name i didn't i didn't even stand up you want to stand up for the devil i didn't you know make a lot of noise you know when i preach like this i have to shout because i see the crowd there although they live tapes they tell me sir you don't need to shout even if you talk uh, you know small they can hear you i always say yes i hear yes i understand when i come over here i forget myself and then i shout because i feel that people far back there i think they will not hear although i know they are hearing god bless you uh, but you know when i preach i shout but over there i sat down and lead my back on the back of the seat and i said you devil there come out 
And then I said in Jesus' name, and those four brothers that were holding the man, they, 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 they thought that, uh, uh, is that enough? They wanted to, to go marathon prayer, sweating prayer, shouting prayer, and marching and run around like this and come back in Jesus' name. And run away again and come in Jesus' name. And jump up and do Jericho Mark in Jesus' name. You don't need to do that for the devil. You are giving him too much attention. Immediately I said in Jesus name come out. I said young man what's your name? He told me his name. I said who is this? He said that's my brother. I said who is that? He said that's so and so. I said who is that? He said that's so and so. I said go back home don't make trouble anymore. And he came the following week they told me he went back. He you know took his bath. He ate. He slept. Everything was all right. Everything will be all right when you pray for them in Jesus name. You know what we are talking about? I have given you number 5. Number 6. The firmness of the deliverer. The firmness of the deliverer. You give a word of command. And you do not bulge. You say. Come out in Jesus name. He may argue. He may say we are not coming out. He may say we are possessed this man. And we are going to stay in this man forever. We are going to ruin him. We are going to destroy him. The firmness of the deliverer. When Jesus said go. They went and they had no choice. Number seven. The freedom of the delivered. As we look at the account in Mark. When the people came and they saw him. They saw that he was closed. He was in his right mind. He was totally free. And you will, you will set the people free in Jesus name. Now I come to point number three. Our defense and triumph over the devil. I said you will triumph over the devil. Why are you going to triumph over the devil? Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 27. The eternal God is thy refuge. Give me an amen. amen. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. An amen. amen. He shall trust out the enemy before thee. And shall say destroy them. In Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous runneth into it. And he is saved. Are you righteous? I said, are you righteous? In Isaiah chapter 43 and in verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. You know, Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Have you forgotten Zechariah chapter 2 and in verse 5? For I, says the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire around her. Can they come around you? The magicians and the occultic people, they have given testimony. And when they become born again now, that when they were in the occult world, they were trying to get at uh, the people that uh, were the people of God. But as they wanted to get near them, they saw the fire, a wall of fire around them. Maybe you cannot see it, but they can see it. And that's why they are afraid of you. Some years ago, we had uh, one of our young uh, people here, and uh, one of the occultic people wanted to do something against him. And uh, he went to the room where he was. He said he had got his charm. He has got everything, and it was in his hand. He wanted to slap him like this so that from his sleep, he'll become totally paralyzed. And little Samuel was just sleeping. He didn't know anything. Why? Because even while you are asleep, Jesus will never leave you. Jesus will never forsake you. While you are sleeping and snoring, and you think that, uh, you know, I don't know what is happening, the angels of the Lord encamp around them that fear the Lord as the mountains surround Jerusalem. Even so, the angels of the Lord surround them that fear the Lord. And then he wanted to slap somewhere like this. His hand smote an invisible wall. He said what? He made all his incantations again and strengthened himself, lifted up his hand, slapped like this. He slapped the wall again and there was no wall there and then he made all the incantations again and then wanted to snap him he snapped the wall again and then when Samuel woke up in the morning uh, he, he came to him and said tell me your secret do you know we have a secret 
Do you know we have a secret? And the devil has been trying. He would have killed you before now. He would have gotten rid of you now or before now, but he cannot do it. The demons will have finished you, but they cannot do it because there is a wall of fire around you in Jesus' name for your life, for ye are dead, and your life is seed with Christ in God. Because he said, Acts chapter 10, chapter 18, verse 10, I am with you, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. First John chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Ye of God. How many of you have God? How many of you have God? Why don't you stand up here of God, little children? You have overcome them. Have you overcome them? You have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Behold, I give unto you power. Over all to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing, nothing shall be able to hurt you. Don't you know that you have dominion? Don't you know you have authority? And don't you know that there is no power that can overcome your life? There's a storm there. There's a problem there. There are difficulties there. Why don't you rely on the Lord and believe on the Lord? And you have the victory in Jesus' name. Your victory is there. Your victory is there. Your victory is there. Believe your victory is there. Don't be afraid of the devil. He should be afraid of you. Don't be afraid of demons. They should be afraid of you. You are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Christ is living inside you. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. You have overcome already. Believe the Lord. The promises are yours. Know what is written concerning you. That's why Jesus was calm. That's why he was peaceful. He knew the prophecies that had been written concerning him. Because of that, he knew that no river, no sea, no ocean could drown him. Don't you know what's written concerning you? Don't you know the promises of God that have been given to you? Believe that word. Believe that word. Believe that word. Any storm there, any problem there, anything there, wind that is blowing there, it came, but it will come to pass. It will pass away. It will not remain there. The trouble in the family, the trouble from the in-laws, the trouble in the place of work, the persecution you are having in that community, the problem you are having in that local church. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. The Lord is on your side. The Lord is on your side. The Lord is on your side. He will silence the devil on your behalf. He will silence the demons on your behalf. You have the victory already. You have the victory already. You have the victory already. The Lord is with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. From tonight, please, my brothers and sisters, listen. If you will always stand on the unchanging promises of the Lord, the Lord will always give you the victory. The problems may come, but it will come to pass. It will pass away. There will be a great calm in Jesus' name. You have a ministry. Brother or sister, young or old, you have a ministry. If the devil didn't know you are going to do something significant, he'll not be making so much trouble with your life. He's afraid. He's afraid. That if he let you alone, he knew that you are going to destroy his kingdom. It's because you are significant. That's why he's fighting. It's because you are important. That's why he's fighting. It's because you have a ministry. That's why he's fighting. It's because you are making a mark. That's why he's fighting. It's because something good is written about you. That's why he's fighting. It's because you are going to the other side. You are going to the other side. And you will have the victory, my sister. You will have the victory, my brother. It is because you are a man that will succeed. You are a man that will overcome. You are a man that will win souls. You are a woman that will do something significant for 
for the Lord. That's why he's making trouble. But his trouble will never stand. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. And the Egyptians you see today, you will never see them again anymore in Jesus' name. The everlasting arms are underneath you. The power of the Lord is for you. Jesus is living inside you. The Holy Ghost is within you. There is an invisible wall of fire around you. Anywhere you go, the Lord will be with you. When you call on the name of Jesus, they will answer. When you stand upon the promises, they will never fail. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You'll finish your ministry before you go. You will finish before you go. Didn't you hear the people were reading about John Wesley died at the age of 88? Didn't you hear about D.L. Moody? Didn't you hear about Smith Wigglesworth? Didn't you hear about John G. Lake? They finish. You will finish in Jesus' name. Until you can pronounce the word by the leading of the Holy Ghost. Father, glorify thyself. I've glorified thee on earth. The work you have given me to do, I have finished. Until that time, Satan cannot do anything with you. Demons cannot do anything with you. You will live to proclaim the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Raise up the hand of victory. The hand of victory. You are victorious. You are going to be anointed tonight. You lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. The word of authority will be in your mouth. Just speak it out. Don't wait for your feeling. Just speak it out. Don't wait for anything in your body. Just speak it out. Don't wait for anything. It's a word of authority. You will chase demons. You will cast out devils. You will heal the sick. Great things will be done through every one of you in Jesus' name. Keep up those signs. Almighty God, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord, because you are the master of the storm. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you have overcome on our behalf. Because you live, we shall live. Because you overcame, we shall overcome. Because you are victorious, we are going to be victorious. I pray for all my brothers and sisters who are here tonight. I pray, Lord, greater anointing. Double anointing. Supernatural anointing will come upon them in Jesus' name. Anoint their hands. Anoint their tongue anoint their words that lord as they go back into in their locations when they send a storm in any family and they get there and they carry jesus there and they go there and they take the holy ghost there and they go there and they carry the word of authority there when they speak calmness in those situations it will be calm in jesus name demons tormenting people in their location Oh Lord, I pray, as they believe you, the signs will follow all these people that believe in Jesus' name. When they mention your name, Lord Jesus, I pray that that name Jesus will be mighty and powerful in their mouth in Jesus' name. No demons will be able to resist their word of power and authority. Those who have got the anointing before, multiply that anointing in their lives in Jesus' name. Those who have been waiting for the anointing, anoint them tonight. Empower, empower them tonight. And I pray, Lord, they will do exploits for the Lord in Jesus' name. The testimonies who have been hearing about John G. Lake, about Chielos Bond, about Smith Wiggles was about other people you used in the healing deliverance ministry. I pray that these ants that are all the people that have given surrendered themselves to you and the people that want to serve you. I pray Lord, those people, many of them have died, just a few of them remain. Raise up other people from these people in Jesus' name. I pray that we'll be hearing testimonies. The works you did, they will do. And greater works than this will they do because you have gone to the Father. Lay your hand upon everyone. And if anyone is sick or tormented or afflicted in any way there, as or you have already manifested your power in their lives, set them free in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that wall of fire, let it be around them. That wall of security, let it be around them. 
that nothing evil will touch them in Jesus name keep them specially for a special assignment you have given unto them thank you Lord because we know you have answered in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen are you tired okay keep on standing in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we have the victory in the name of Jesus